Welcome to Dr. Scheme. Dr. Scheme is a programming environment for Scheme, as well as for several experimental languages. We built it with the needs of both experts and novices in mind. When you start Dr. Scheme, you will see a display like this. Dr. Scheme's display is divided into two halves. The upper half is called the definitions window. This is where you create new functions and types. The lower half is called the interactions window. Here you can experiment with the definitions you create. In this tour, we will explore just a few of the many features in Dr. Scheme. Let's see how to use Dr. Scheme's interactions window as a calculator. For instance, let's try to add 2 and 3. We type in the expression and hit enter, and Dr. Scheme responds with the answer. We could also try to ask Dr. Scheme to compute the difference between 1k and 1000, which we would enter as follows. Sure enough, it returns with 24. Now we're ready to explore the definitions window. Let's create a little function to convert temperatures from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Notice that as we edit the function, Dr. Scheme both colors the text according to the rules of Scheme Grammar and also automatically indents lines when we hit Enter. Furthermore, when we enter a closing parenthesis, Dr. Scheme indicates the corresponding opening one and highlights the completed expression. This is true no matter where you place the cursor in the buffer, not only when entering new code. Once we have completed our definition, we click on the Run button at the top right. This tells Dr. Scheme to register the new definition for use in the Interactions window. Notice that the color of the program has changed, with some portions in black and some in red. Dr. Scheme has noticed that some of the program in red has not been tested and is warning us about it. We can now go to the Interactions window prompt and write expressions that use this new function. If, for instance, we apply the function to minus 40, notice what happens. When we hit Enter, this uses the body of the function whose color therefore changes to black. Of course, we shouldn't test our function on one input alone, so let's try a few more important cases. Dr. Scheme supports what we call transparent editing. Suppose we make a change to the definitions window but forget to click Run. Now the result of the interactions window is going to be inconsistent with the text of the program. Dr. Scheme therefore warns us about this. The warning disappears once the definitions and interactions are made consistent. Scheme has some of the most sophisticated support for numbers found in any programming language. Here's an expression that computes a really large number. Here's one that takes the square root of minus 1. Notice that because of its prefix syntax, Scheme is extremely generous in variable names. For instance, you can put a dash in the middle of one. Here are two more definitions, the second of which takes naming to new heights. Let's see what Dr. Scheme thinks the value of these expressions should be. The value of a big number is a big number. The value of the square root of minus 1 is the imaginary number i, printed in Scheme's special syntax. If we multiply this by itself, we get minus 1 back. Dr. Scheme also understands rational numbers, which too are stored to complete precision. It even knows how to print them intelligently. Finally, when we ask for the value of e to the i times pi, we get what looks like strange output. The hash i is Dr. Scheme's way of saying that the following number is imprecise, the answer is, of course, extremely close to minus 1. Dr. Scheme supports tabbed editing. Simply select New Tab from the File menu. Once you have definitions in your new tab, you can click Run to use them. Each tab is its own island. You can't use the definitions from another tab in this one. This avoids name clashes and minimizes confusing answers. One of the most distinctive features of Dr. Scheme is what we call language levels. These present languages like Scheme and Jarvis through a series of sub-languages that grow with the student's understanding, rather like a textbook does. Our levels have been designed through careful observation of students and labs for well over a decade. 
Dr. Skeen begins in the beginning student level, which is suitable for people using the book How to Design Programs. To choose a different language level, use the language menu. You can also choose a level using the selector at the bottom left of Dr. Skeen. Consider this definition of the length function, which is slightly buggy. Do you see why? If I try to run this in the full scheme language, I get a rather unhelpful error. The error message I get assumes that a parameter can be a function. But to a beginning student working in a first-order language, this concept simply makes no sense. Just to understand the error, therefore, forces the student to learn about advanced concepts in an ad hoc way. In the beginning student level, this same program is simply never allowed to run. Dr. Scheme instead signals an error. Like all other output in Dr. Scheme, this error message has improved through years of laboratory observation. Here's another buggy program. Do you see the error? Once again, when the student tries to run it, Dr. Scheme signals a syntax error providing information that a student can comprehend. Here's another buggy program and Dr. Scheme's syntax error for it. Now let's look at what happens when we try to run the same program in the full scheme language instead. On the base case, it runs and produces the right answer. But for other inputs, it does something insidious. It produces the wrong answer, but doesn't halt with any kind of error. Examples like these are why we created language levels and why you should use them. Dr. Scheme allows you to play with images as values. For instance, you can embed images directly in your program source. Use Insert Image from the Insert menu. Dr. Scheme also provides libraries called Teach Packs for creating images. Here's a program that draws a face using operations provided by the Image Teach Pack. Of course, we could put these two together. Here we use the image teach pack to modify an image in the source program. One of the most distinctive features of Dr. Scheme is its algebraic stepper. The stepper shows the program's execution using the algebraic rules of reduction that we teach in how to design programs. The sub-expression in green on the left shows which expression is about to be evaluated next while the expression in purple on the right shows its resulting value. A student can click through this sequence, going back and forth to understand how the program evaluates. Here, we showed that the stepper works with images as well as it does with traditional data. When a program has an error, Dr. Scheme highlights the location of the error in the program source. In the advanced language levels, it can also present a backtrace of how program execution got to this point. For more advanced errors, a user might prefer to use the debugger to step through, into, and over function executions. The syntax checker can be used to sanity check the program source before execution. Try hovering the cursor over a variable and see what it does. Finally, Dr. Scheme has a profiler for evaluating program performance. You have to turn on profiling using the language menu, then run the program. When the program is done, you can examine statistics about the program's behavior. In fact, you don't even have to wait for it to finish. Just update the view when you want the latest information. This concludes our brief tour of Dr. Scheme. We hope you've enjoyed this tour 
and we hope you'll try out Dr. Scheme. Thank you, and see you online.